Man, we just had a shocking jobs report come in. We've had a non-farm payroll figure showing that 23,000 more jobs than expected have come into place in December. That means that the labour market is still tight, but there were some hidden gems in the report which explain why this report gives us some hope which a lot of people are missing. We're going to break down the report, what this means for the wider markets and how Bitcoin is responding. Smash up likes. Don't forget to subscribe. As you can see here, guys, the figures came in and we were expecting 200,000 on the non-farm payroll reading and it came in at 223,000. If I show you this in a visual format, you can see slowly the number of non-farm payrolls are starting to decline. 256 in the previous month, 263 in the month before, and we had a good tapering off here. But remember, the expectation, the consensus for the last three, four months has been this figure has to come down to 200,000, but we have not seen that just yet. But why is it then that we are seeing a little bit of euphoria, a little bit of happiness, a little bit of confusion in the markets? And that is because there is more to be seen in this report. Let's take a look at how Bitcoin responded because the report came out at 1.30 my time. You can see initially you saw a dump going into the meeting the five minutes before. When the reading came out, you saw a nice big move. In fact, let's go over right to the minute chart to see how the traders were trading this move. You can see here right in the lead up, they were selling off and then you saw a positive reading come in, but the headline was not positive. So that 223,000 jobs is not fantastic. But what is exciting, which the markets are getting excited about, is the following. Firstly, the report showed that the unemployment rate fell down to 3.5%. Now, this is an interesting figure because ultimately, as Jerome Powell says, he needs to see unemployment start to rise, right? I know it sounds odd. It doesn't sound good in the sense that you want to see people unemployed. But in order for inflation to come down, you need less people having jobs, right? And that partly helps. So he's happy to see unemployment unofficially go up to that 4, 4.5, 5% even. More importantly, if you look at the wage growth, what we can see is that annualized wage growth fell from the estimate of 5% to 4.6%. This is really important. Now, whilst this is obviously still far from the 2% inflation you would expect to see in wage inflation, the 4.6 is a much better reading than 5%. So again, just like we saw CPI start to notch down, you're seeing that the wage growth is starting to notch down, which is obviously a key driver in the headline figures of CPI and PCE inflation also. If you look at the month-on-month -month figure, the estimate was 0.4% month-on-month. That came in at 0.3%. So a double beat on those wage growth figures and markets can respond positively to that. And then that brings us back down to this headline figure. Why are markets not really taking this headline figure into account. And that is because we know that the BLS aren't the most trusted in terms of the numbers they provide. A lot of people are very skeptical that the numbers they're providing are slightly inflated to show this effect that we're not going into a recession. The economy is just doing fine. Don't worry about what the Fed's doing. And perhaps Jerome Powell knows the real number laying behind that. So a lot of people are still thinking this 223,000 new jobs is slightly inflated due to political reasons. For our purposes, in terms of the crypto markets, what do we need to worry about? Well, you can see Bitcoin sitting here at 17,800 roughly, okay? It's holding up very strong and it has been doing really well. Let's just head over to the daily chart. And you can see here now that Bitcoin's had a really good five, six day period. And if we then flip up to the weekly chart, getting a nice positive green week, and that's a good start to the end. If we could build from this, that would be great. If we head over to the traditional markets to see how they're responding, you can see, that US markets are moving slightly green as well. 0.5 on the NASDAQ, 0.86% on the S&P, and the Dow Jones 0.9. So it shows that a lot of these traditional markets and Bitcoin are looking at the wage growth numbers as a positive reading. So yes, the headline figure is a little bit scary. There's more jobs being created, it's okay because the wage inflation is coming down 4.6 versus 5 and 0.3% month on month versus the 0.4 expected. Now, what's interesting is how that's affected what the market has priced in for the February rate hike. Remember, the FOMC meet on the 1st of February, and this has been pretty steady. 95% every time we've been checking it over the last few days, 95% of the market were expecting just a 25 base point rate hike. You've seen that notch down. This is incredible. In other words, now 10% percent of the market, which is not an insignificant proportion, it's still small, but it's not insignificant, are expecting a pause as soon as February. Now, this could have two ramifications. Either one, we get the pause and therefore we're going to see a nice big rally. 
But two, if we don't get that pause, this 10% is not priced in. So that redness will have to come in. If we get 50 basis points, which I actually think we may still see 50 basis points at the next meeting, the market could see a lot of redness. Because right now where the market levels are, they are not pricing in 50 basis points. People are very optimistic right now. They've seen CPI come down. They've seen a little bit better numbers there in the non-farm payroll today in terms of the wage growth and the unemployment. And perhaps they're getting a little bit over-egged on. And we know from what we saw in the FOMC minutes, Jerome Powell does not want unwarranted, remember those were the words he used, unwarranted financial conditions. He doesn't want the market to get overexcited. And he's still got work to do. I think the headline figure of 223,000 jobs reminds us that Jerome Powell still has work to do in terms of softening that labor market. That's important for him. Inflation and softening the labor market. His two remits, the two things he needs to get on top of right now. Another interesting update is that Kathy Wood, the renowned investor who's had a very difficult 2021, she invests in really risk on assets. She did really well with Tesla and a few other growth stocks and her portfolio, like anybody else who was risk on throughout 2021 got wrecked, but she is doubling down on her investment in Coinbase, now buying almost $6 million of Coinbase and selling $5 million of Silvergate Capital, which is very, very interesting and something for us to monitor. Obviously, Silvergate, which is the ticker symbol SI, shares slump 43% after the crypto bank said it was reducing headcount by 40% and writing off the 200 million related to the acquisition of DM Association from Facebook parent Meta Platforms, okay? So remember, they bought DM. Remember that coin they were going to make over at Facebook? Yep, Silvergate bought it, big bank in the crypto space. And they've been struggling. They've been having a little bit of a difficult time. And Kathy Wood has offloaded to rebalance their ETF away from Silvergate and more into Coinbase. Hoibi are also facing a few difficulties over the last 24 hours or so. They've seen $60 million in token outflows. And the on-chain data is showing that more than $100 million of tokens have left the exchange just this week. That's no mean feat, guys. So seeing a little bit of a run here on Hoibi, you guys know how I feel in terms of runs. Anytime there is any smoke on any exchange, if you see any smoke, any rumors, any FUD, just move your exchanges, move your coins, put it on cold storage, let it die down. If you really want to put it back, put it back. There is no exchange out there that is fail-proof. And it's really important that if you see any news headlines like this, get your cash out. You've seen what's happened with Celsius. The update from Celsius yesterday was that one of, I, think, I can't remember who that judge was, but he said that the assets were actually owned to the estate, not to you or I who left money in the platform. Okay, obviously I didn't use Celsius, but I'm saying if you guys did use Celsius, they're saying that you've given away your rights to your Bitcoin to the Celsius estate, which is absolutely an insane precedence that they're setting, probably to make sure that they're covering the likes of Fidelity, they're covering the likes of BlackRock as they enter the crypto space. They want to make sure that all this precedent is set in the right way for their big groups and conglomerates to have it the way that they want to. Now, in terms of the dollar index, remember, we were getting quite excited that we're getting a nice extended move to the downside here on the dollar index. But what did I warn about? I warned about this, that on the weekly chart where we closed below it, I said in yesterday's video, we want to make sure we do not get a powerful bounce. And unfortunately, we are getting that. Dollar index is printing at the time of recording here a bullish engulfing candle. This what you're seeing here, guys, is a bullish engulfing candle. It is a bullish pattern, which normally suggests that this dollar index can go for a powerful move to the upside. We do not want this weekly candle to finish looking like this. This will not be great for what we want. Remember, we want a long weekly downtrend here on the, in, on the dollar index. If this builds some strength, this could be painful. If you don't know what bullish engulfing candle is or bearish engulfing or what's a doji and a dragonfly candle and all this stuff, it's for free. You just the UK forward slash TA. Make use of that course, guys. I promise you it will not be available forever for free. And I will be making it a paid course at some point only because I know people procrastinate. That's the only reason I'm going to put it behind the paywall is because people procrastinate. So take advantage of it. Use it. Learn it. It's a really useful course. I cover off everything from beginner in terms of TA. So that's a worry. Now, if we head on over to the daily chart on the dollar index, we do have one thing working in our favor, and that is on the daily chart, the rally we are seeing in the dollar index is running into the EMA ribbon, okay? It's running into the EMA ribbon. So we wanna see the EMA ribbon hold here on the daily, and send it back down violently to the downside. Remember, it's not actually touched the daily EMA ribbon since we flipped the ribbon, since we turned bearish. So we've had really extended downward period here where the, uh, the dollar index bears have been pushing it nicely to the downside. This is the first bit of relief rally it's had, and I wanna see this get pushed down to the downside to nullify any chance that it's able to flip back to the upside. It's a mixed bag with the non-farm payrolls, but 
A lot of hope to be taken away from the reading we received. Yes, the headline jobs figure shows we saw 23,000 more jobs than we expected. We can't seem to get below that 200,000 level of a job. And we need to acknowledge that the labor market is still tied. Jerome Powell still has work to do, but none of that is new. We still know that we're expected to continue to raise rates. We know that we're going to hike to a higher level and stay there for longer. The Fed has made this very clear. So anybody who's getting ahead, ahead of themselves and saying, oh, we're out of the woods here. It's all good. We're going to be fine. He's going to do a quick rate pause and then start cutting very quickly into this year. I mean, we've got to realistically look at it and say, this is not going to get fixed overnight, right? This inflation is entrenched and we need to get it out methodically. Now, the positive we have seen is obviously the wage growth has started to reduce. We're seeing 4.6 versus the 5.6 and 0.3 month on month versus 0.4. That is showing that that wage inflation is starting to move and trend in the right direction, just like CPI was before. So let's take away the positives whilst understanding that, yes, the labor market is still tight and that's going to keep markets on their toes. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you appreciate this type of up-to-date content live when the data comes out, smash all likes. Don't forget to subscribe as always. Check out this video here and I'll see you in the next one.